Hello and welcome to this instructional video on developer workflows for ServLoop. Um, this is just uh, my current method of uh, applying my changes to the code base as I'm uh, making it ever better. So let's say that I want to edit this page. Uh, this is a page generated by ServLoop and if I'm logged in as an admin then I can uh, click the admin uh, drop down here and hit edit page which will bring it up. I often like to bring it up in another tab. Um, and here we'll see the map of the, the page, the, how it's laid out and structured. And let's say that I want to work on the, uh, the navigation over here, which is, is hard-coded in the code base. All the, the left side here is all static content that's just in WYSIWYGS. Um, so uh, if I were to edit those, that, uh, it would just give me a WYSIWYG to change that, those content chunks. Um, but this one is hard-coded, so it's a little more interesting and more likely where we get into heavier development. So first we'll notice that this is node 2681. Um, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll take that knowledge with us and dive into the code base here. And uh, in the main client extension of the serve loop tree trunk is a function called custom node print. And this is the main function we use to override certain behavior, the default behaviors that ServLoop provides for generating page content and survey content. So one of the nodes customized here is our 2681, uh, which is among the many nodes of uh, the, <laughs> the budding documentation section. They're all using this one function to keep a consistent printing of the navigation on the ServLoop site. So for the, the case of showing you how these changes would apply, let's just test this out by just returning hello world instead of the navigation for that node. So the way we're gonna apply this change is first uh, copy from wherever you're editing your, your code. Right now I have this in a repository folder where I keep all my repositories that are uh, tied to GitHub and I keep that separate from uh, the vendor folder within my Laravel installation running in Homestead <laughs> buried deep in there. So part of my process is copying over uh, the folders from my working directory to the virtual server directories. For that I use a, a shell script um, to copy from the serve loop src folder and in this case the client uh, uh, package is serve loop org. That src folder I copy all those over so basically anytime I make any changes in my code base to apply them I want to copy them from where my changes happened into the active vendor folder. And with that, if we reload this, it's got uh, refresh equals one on top of it. If you put that on any page, it will skip the caching process to be sure we're getting the freshest read of the tree's specifications. So we're gonna run that, and hopefully this over here should swap out with our temporary hello world. There we go. So you can see that worked without doing anything else. Uh, that's because we only change the controllers and, and uh, there's only one copy of the controllers in the code base uh, and it's a little less complicated. So now let's check out print documentation nav, the function that's actually going to be printing things out. And it's going to call the view ink documentation navigation and it's going to return that. So it's passing in our map of the navigation and it's passing in the current page which is loaded in the tree trunk of the serve loop engine. So if we open up the, uh, the view, ink documentation navigation, just so you know, this is in the views folder uh, within the serve loop org package. If we open up the view, ink documentation navigation, we'll see mostly HTML with a little bit of logic um, that is part of blade templates. You can look at more, more at Laravel documentation on learning blade templating. So let's pretend we want to make a change to this page. Let's change this title to Hello World and keep the rest of the nav menu this time instead of substituting the whole thing out. So I'm going to repeat what I did last time, just copying over the contents. Uh, this is copying over the controllers and the views, but the views haven't been propagated to other folders in the Laravel framework. So we're seeing the previous view uh, without our new changes applied. Um, but what we'll want to do whenever we edit views or models, then we're going to want to run an extra step. 
at this point, I, I often run this even when I don't have to, just to be extra sure, certain that uh, my code base is all up to date. Um, but we're going to run the artisan vendor publish script. This is copying a lot of files to a lot of different spots. Um, and, and even if you're just editing a few, uh, you'll off, you're often going to want to run this. All right, so once we've run that, we refresh this page again with the question mark refresh equals one on top, and we've got our hello world swapped out at the top. Um, so that is how we've just made a change to this page. I'm going to undo that, save that, and push my changes back up to the spot in my virtual server. Refresh this. And we're back to documentation overview. There are there's one other aspect of uh, the system that's worth really talking about. If you look at the source code on serve loop generated pages and surveys, you'll see that there's a sys1.min.css, a sys2.min.css, and uh, also for JavaScript. This contains all the core JavaScript and CSS generated by serve loop both in the code base and the customized client settings and tree specifications especially for the JavaScript. So if you're making cho changes to uh, core CSS or JavaScript for the serve loop engine, or if you're changing um, the custom CSS uh, for the installation that you're working on, then you might need to go through some extra steps to, to really refresh the site uh, CSS and JavaScript dependencies. One way to do that is to directly load <laughs> CSS reload. And that will just respond with a little smiley face if it worked. And uh, then uh, you'll know that at least you've got uh, some CSS files in place. This happens automatically in the background. Anytime you uh, do refresh equals one on the system settings page, that refreshes a bunch of things, uh, but it includes the CSS. Um, anytime you save the settings on this page, it will also regenerate all the CSS, the core CSS and JavaScript. But if you've just imported a bunch of new trees or big changes to the uh, database, then you might want to run refresh all caches, which will call refresh equals two, which will then methodically go through all the trees in the database and reload the JavaScript, which maps their layouts, uh, which are then fed into the core JavaScript. So that's a good thing to do a hard refresh uh, if something's weird. Finally, um, once you've updated those uh, core JavaScript and CSS files, you'll probably want to force your browser to uh, reload the uh, sys2.min.css and .javascript. The sys1 files are even simpler and less likely uh, to have any changes going on, but the sys2s are worth maybe doing a command shift hard refresh in the browser. And then you'll see the, the code may change a little bit, and when you come back to reload this page, then your style changes would be applied. Um, that's, the, that's the final complicated workflow for now. Uh, please give me feedback on if there's any suggestions you have on my workflow. And I hope to be providing more documentation soon. Thanks so much.